This is the new Leo and Pluto Fresnel from Astera. This is a Cinity Gear News video supported by B&H and CVP. Hey guys, Graham Miller Sheldon here from CineD.com. Welcome to Cine Gear 2023 here at Paramount Studios in Los Angeles, California. I met the Astera booth joined by Thor from Astera. How's it going, Thor? It's going pretty good, Graham. How are you? Not too bad. I mean, it's so exciting to be back on the lot. There are people here. Everybody's here. It's a great vibe, I feel like, this year. Yeah, you know what? It's like my first sending gear was actually 2019 here, uh, just here. And then going to the convention center last year, it just wasn't the same. Wasn't, uh, it wasn't the same. to be back here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then actually the president visited last year, which made parking really tricky. So anyway, we, enough yeah. about that. We're here because of something very exciting directly behind us here. It's a hard light from Astera, kind of, a, I mean, a, a new thing for you guys, really. It is. I mean, we obviously, we've done parts before, uh, LED parts there, but now moving more into, as we just get more and more into the film space, so having now bringing out Fresnels is, it was just a logical thing to do. The technology is modern, uh, is there now as well, so we can get it as bright as we need it, and uh, it just made total sense to bring this out now. So it's a Fresnel hard light with uh, various, obviously, accessories that you can add in front of the Fresnel attached. So it's always a Fresnel. It's always a Fresnel. Um, that's basically the base package. So you have the, the fixture with the Fresnel lens, with the barn doors. Uh, you can, of course, take the Fresnel lens out, use it as just an open face. If you want to just get it really hard, do some shadow play, anything like that. Uh, and then you obviously have different modifiers as you always want on lights as well. So we have the big Leo that comes with the, uh, the Rabbit Rounder adapter. So any of the Rabbit Rounder system from DOP choice, you can just, that, some stuff you already have in your inventory, you can just pop it straight on and it works straight out of the box. Um, and then obviously also bringing out later this year, towards the end of the year, uh, projector lenses for both of them as well. And that's going to be, uh, it's going to be zoom lenses. So we'll have 16 to 36 degrees zoom range on them. So it'll cover you sort of your standard 19, 26, 36 degrees that you're, that you're using all the time and also go a little bit narrower if you need that. That makes sense. Well, let's talk about, since you brought up beam angle, let's talk about that. So the base package, so to speak, the Fresnel, what is the beam angle on that just out of the box? 15 to 60 degrees. And then you add the projector in front of the Fresnel. What's the beam angle now available to you? No, you, you take the Fresnel lens out, and that way the projector lens works directly with the, uh, with the LED chip from directly out. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, and then two uh, different versions. What, what's the fixture called, by the way? And then we'll get into the two different versions. The, uh, so the small one is called Pluto, and the big one is called Leo. So looking at the small one, it's a, uh, the Pluto, it's an 80-watt LED engine. Uh, comparing it to something you already know, it's at 3200 Kelvin, it's comparable to a 300 watt tungsten Fresnel. Uh, the big one, Leo, uh, 250 watt LED engine in that, uh, comparable to a 1K tungsten Fresnel. Now, we, we didn't just look at numbers and do math when we came up with these comparisons. We, we actually went and bought an Arri 1K and an Arri 300, shot them out against each other, matched beam angles and took a meter to it, because at the end of the day, real values is what matters. First of all, really appreciate that. Um, not naming specific manufacturers, but sometimes the numbers uh, are, are very healthy in favor of the fixture. Let me just, and they're metered at like one inch from the, the front of the light. I assume you guys didn't do that. Thank you for that. No, absolutely not. And it's, look, one of the things that we have here as well, we're actually from a real life background. I mean, used to do, my, my background is concert touring. Simon, our R&D director, has come from a real live event background as well, so we actually use to use lights. It's not just sort of like, we're not just making them and selling them, we actually used to do them and use them for years. And the amount of times I've heard, oh, this is a 1K equivalent, just to take it out on a job, and it's like, uh, maybe a 650. We don't want to do that, we can't do that. We, we, we want to bring out what people want, what people need, and they need to be able to trust us when we say, this is a 1K for equivalent, this is a 300 equivalent. So, it's the only way to do it. Well, I appreciate, uh, honestly, your honesty as a brand. So thank you. Something else that's interesting about the exterior design of both the Leo and the Pluto, they're, the, they're numbers on the side by the yoke. That's to help with balance, I assume? It, it is. So we have, along all four sides of the lights, we have airline track. And then the, the yoke is mounted in what we call a yoke base, which basically is it's a base that we can then release and move along the side of the body. So we can balance it depending on what sort of modifier we, we use on it. We can then say we put the projector lens on, it becomes front heavy. So we can then move the yoke further to the front of the fixture, and then you still have a balanced fixture that's nice and easy to operate. 
You know, that the sort of modularity aspect feels a lot like previous fixtures from Astera. That seems like an idea that you're sticking with. You take it out of the box, it can become whatever you kind of need it to become using different accessories, even through airline tracks. So I just, I like that as a design philosophy in general. It, it is, it's a very good concept and it gives you the flexibility that you that you need to be able to, to do different concepts with it. It's like, it's, we also, we don't want to be that manufacturer who goes, this is how you have to use that light. Yeah, combo stand only or whatever. Yeah, it's like, it, it doesn't work. It was like, we all been on film sets and see, see what's going on there. It's like, how often do you see a light just used in a standard traditional way? It's like, they'll put it on condors, they'll put it on stands over there, they build custom frames and mount 15 of them together. It's like, it's always you being used in a special way because that's what you need for that particular shoot. And we try to make sure that we can actually adapt to that as well and just give that flexibility to the users out there. Very cool. Now tell me about the uh, chip that's in both of these fixtures. Is it the same sort of CT, uh, CCT range, same kind of color space that we're familiar with from other Astera products? It's exactly the same. It's the Titan LED engine. So uh, basically you can take these new lights here, you can take any of our Titan tubes, Helios, Hyperion, you can take the Pixel Brick, the Hydra panels, the AX9, give them the same values, you have exactly the same color coming out. It's like there's no difference there. Uh, this is also we what we've done here with these is they took a little bit of time because obviously the technology had to mature to to get to the level of getting the output that we needed as well. But now we have it here and it's a full on match with anything else with a Titan LED engine in it. Very cool. Let's talk uh, connectivity. I mean, I'm assuming it works with your Bluetooth app. What about like wireless DMX, things like that? No, absolutely. All of that is exactly what you used to from before. Uh, you can connect it to the app using using the Acero box, but they also have BTB, Bluetooth Bridge, built in as well. So you can connect the app directly to one of the lights, then use that as a transmitter to connect the rest of the lights uh, as, as well. Uh, CRMX, of course, uh, wireless DMX, also wireless RDM built in as standard in these lights here. Something we've been asked for a lot, so we figured, why not? Let's, let's do it. Um, Wired DMX as well. Uh, the Leo has 5-pin XLR built in direct. With the Pluto, you can use the uh, the Pixel Brick power, uh, power box and then run DMX, Artnet, SACN directly into that and then out to the to the light. Or you can also use the data link uh, with the Hyperion charger to run either 5-pin uh, XLR, Artnet, SACN directly in as well. So you have all the, all the options to, to control them. So what about daisy chaining? Because I know we can do that with some of your uh, smaller wattage uh, uh, fixtures. You can. So we've looked at the Leo, you have power control on input and output, so you can easily daisy chain power there. Uh, and of course, with the wire DMX, you have five pin in and out, so you can daisy chain that as well. Uh, with the, the Pluto, it's a single input, so you can't daisy chain anything there. But of course, you can still add, just keep adding more, uh, more and more units. So, and if you have the, using the data link, you can then have four of them running out from, the, uh, from one data link. Okay, um, pricing and availability on both fixtures. Uh, I'm not that in, much involved in pricing. I think the MSRP here in the US for Pluto is 1700 and MSRP for the Leo, I believe, is 4300 um, Availability, we are now at the moment, we're shipping demo units to all of our distributors, and then it's uh, going straight into production now. So middle to end of June, we are shipping in quantities from the factory. And what do those kind of base kits look like? Is it coming with a hard case or basically it's in the cardboard box at those prices with the uh, Fresnel? You can choose. So you can get it just in a cardboard if you have want to have your own solutions for your truck or whatever like that, you can do that. Or you can get them in cases as well. So the Leo will come in a hard case if you want that with, of course, Fresnel lens, 8-leaf barn door, TVMP adapter, handle, yoke, yoke bases, uh, cable, everything in there. Literally take it up, open up the case, off you go. Uh, for the Pluto, they come in a twin kit, and then again, exactly the same, everything, all the accessories in there. So you have the Fresnel lens, the eight-leaf barn door, TVMP adapter on that, you have uh, the handles on it, you have the chargers, everything in the case, nice and easy. And uh, no internal batteries on these, right? No, no, of course, internal batteries. So In both sizes? Uh, in both sizes, yeah. So internal battery on this one here, you'll get three hour runtime at maximum brightness. For the Leo, you can get two hour runtime at maximum brightness. That is very cool. I, I should have led with that because that's one of my favorite things about Astera as a brand, honestly. Now, what you can also do, because we can't stop there, uh, okay, carry on. <laughs> yeah, no, we got to we, we got to take it one step further. You can, of course, also use ex external batteries. So with the Pluto, you have we have our runtime extender, 
which came out last year, where you can use V-mount or gold mount batteries on it. That'll actually clip straight onto the yoke here, and then you just have a cable there, and then you can just you can run it off the external battery to begin with. When that runs out, the internal battery kicks in, you hot swap the external battery, and you just continue to run on battery indefinitely if you want to. Similar with the Leo, you have a separate 3-pin XLR uh, DC port on it. Uh, standard pin configuration, so any systems out there used for other manufacturers' lights can be used here. Um, 12 to 48 volt DC. So 12 to 20 volts, it'll run at a reduced brightness. Over 20 volt, it'll run at full brightness. And exactly the same thing there as well. You can use, you can set priorities, so you can then set to run at the external battery first. Once that runs out, internal battery kicks in, so you don't have any downtime. You just hot swap the external batteries, and you can just continue to roll indefinitely. Very, very cool. Okay, final question. Uh, I'm going to leave you with a little bit of a curveball. Helios, Hyperion, Titan, I mean, these tube lights really changed at least the work I do as a director of photography. Uh -huh. Am I ever going to see a Gen 2 of any of those? There's nothing in the works at the moment. Now we are constantly talking to people. The limitations are basically how much further can you take it in terms of LED technology, brightness, battery technology, runtime, all, all things like that. It's, it's basically where the technology is, that's where our limitations are. So we're constantly keeping an eye on it, seeing what we can do, what we can improve. We're constantly talking to gaffers, to DPs, seeing is there any features out there that we, that we don't have or the things that you need getting us feedback back from them, and it's a continuous process. There's, there's always a lot in the pipeline, uh, but we'll just have to see what's coming. There's not currently on YouTube, I just gotta say that, because we, we do get, get that every, every two minutes. It's like, is there a Titan V2 coming out? So it, there's no plans for that at the moment now, but you never know what the future holds. Once the technology matures, then there might be a new version, of course. Well, Thor, thank you so much. Look, I had to ask because people at home would be rightfully mad at me if I didn't. Of course. But the fixtures look incredible. It's great to see Astera continuing to innovate in the cinema space, especially. So, how cool. Thank you. And just to say, not also bringing it to the studio space with these here as well. We're actually doing studio versions without battery for these two lights here as well. So the At a lower MSRP or no? Uh, what the pricing one going to be like, I don't know at this point here, but they should be hopefully also be available towards the end of this year here. Uh, the Pluto without a battery uh, will, will be there, and also with the Leo, removing the battery, but also adding a pole-operated yoke and pole-operated zoom on it. So that'll be a proper studio for now as well. Thanks, Thor. Thank you, Graham. It was a pleasure. All right, that's it for us here at the Astera booth at Cinegear 2023. Stay tuned for more continuing coverage from the show. If you like the content, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. That would be awesome. Thanks, guys. Bye.